Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. Welcome to another edition of uh, Sound Bites. I'm a uh, the newest host here on Spoonie Radio, Spoonie.com. Hi, what's going on? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I have got so much to get to. For those of you who uh, don't know anything about me, and, and well, most of you don't, um, I'm a uh, talk radio host, uh, nationally syndicated comedy writer, uh, food video host, and um, I guess I don't kind of frustrated chef wannabe. Been cooking for a good share of my life, and uh, so uh, I'm, a, I'm a foodie, okay? All right, I know it's a cliche, but I'm a foodie. And, and, you know, I hang out with people who talk about food while we're making food, talk about food while we're eating food, and talk about food uh, when we're done eating food, when we are sated to some degree. So much to get to on the show. Uh, nothing sacred. A woman goes crazy at a Whole Foods when she sees unusual bacon flavors. And I'm going to tell you something. I love bacon, yes. But, you know, the, the whole bacon love thing, it's a little its a little overkill. It's kind of killing the bacon movement. And, you know, but what Whole Foods in Venice, California did to bacon, on a, it's like, what in the hell are you thinking? You aren't going to believe how they abused bacon. I'm, I, it's wow. Are you satisfied with your grocery store? Most people say no. Oh, a guy who actually ate expired food for an entire year. What happened to him? Game of Thrones beer. Kahlua has a new espresso martini that's available in a can, which looks ridiculous. Uh, yeah, just a bunch of fast food stuff. A bunch of I don't know. And and then in the second half of the show, uh, the mail order meal kit. Is this the end of the mail order meal kit? You know what I'm talking about. We're talking about HelloFresh. We're talking about uh, Blue Apron. I've got a Blue Apron box. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, I've got a Blue Apron box behind me because that's our latest meal. My wife and I will crack it open and see what she ordered in just a few. Yeah, are they over? James Beard uh, restaurants, uh, chefs and uh, restaurant f- finalists. Um, testicle flavored beer. <laughs> I'm not joking. The best restaurant in the world. The best restaurant in the world, and it's it's not expensive. And the best scotch in the world is 18 bucks. All right, all of that coming up on the show here on uh, on Spoonie. Whole Foods customer goes to bake uh, goes to bacon goes to uh, Whole Foods of course goes back to the uh, the bacon section and I don't know what the hell Whole Foods is thinking and I don't want to be uh, you know <clears throat> you you can't if you're not watching on YouTube what they did is they they have a bacon case and what they did is they laid out pork belly uncured pork belly so none of it has been smoked none of it has been whatever and they just covered it with fruit. They just covered it with fruit. Um, and, and if you Google this, look it up. But, but what are they thinking? There's no smoke involved. It's just raw pork belly already sliced, covered with cherries, covered with uh, curry, covered with sriracha, covered with whatever. So it's just flavored pork belly, which <clears throat> I'm sorry. And everybody calls it lardo. It's lardo. It's lardo. You know what? It's friggin' pork belly. It's the belly of the hog. It's the it's it's in the inside of the uh, the flap from the uh, the spare rib, and it's it's generally it was originally considered to be essentially crap. Okay, it was not it was not good meat. It was it was not considered good meat because it's all fat. Some brilliant person who you know. Decided to smoke it, make it into bacon, made it into bacon. But I'm going to tell you what Whole Foods has done. At least at this store, it's just, honestly, come on. Soaking pork belly in blueberry. Blueberry. Blueberry pork belly. Who the heck wants blueberry meat of any kind? Do do you want blueberry meat of any kind? Uh, Of all the flavors you could flavor meat, not blueberry. I mean, I've done, I've done, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, beef tenderloin uh, with a rub with the base of uh, espresso. Okay, I can see that, or, or even a little hint of uh, cocoa. All right, blueberries for pancakes. All right, <sighs> breakfast coffee bacon, apple cinnamon bacon, blueberry bacon, curry bacon, bacon, maple bacon is great. Don't get me wrong, maple bacon is 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 brilliant. There's something about maple maple bacon that's different. 
But this woman, Liz Pollock, she lives in uh, Venice, California, and uh, she went and she said it was Oscar Sunday, which felt like the best possible time to uh, brave the Whole Foods on Lincoln Avenue in Venice, which is normally a nightmare. Picked up a container of a shrimp cocktail for dinner, which probably cost like 25 bucks a pound that you could get anywhere else for like eight. <clears throat> That's my uh, editorializing about Whole Foods, which I call Whole Paycheck, by the way. Says uh, what I beheld uh, next was something I wasn't prepared for. They were selling raw bacon marinated in a variety of fruits. It was a plethora of raw bacon options in a stomach churning flavors like maple bacon, blah, 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 whole beans, blah, blah, blah. This is this. Honestly, I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking. It, it, who, so this is this the local manager, uh, the local meat guy who just doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Anyway, she says nothing is sacred, even for the most beloved of breakfast foods. I mean, look, I'm not a picky eater, and I consider myself an option, my uh, open-minded person. Some thick cut bacon with a little seasoning, sure, no problem, but not fruit. Are you out of your nut? It's gross. It is an affront. To bacon. So, I think I've said enough about the bacon thing. But it is. I mean, what blueberry bacon? Don't insult the the sacred pork belly. Don't insult it. All right, pork belly, and this this is like okay, see for barbecue. All right, where where, where did barbecue come from? Uh, slaves. Slaves took the the crap meat that was left over from the uh, you know. Uh, from the main house, and they and they and they slow smoked it, and they and they seasoned it, and they made it into something brilliant. And and we owe our you know not my ancestors personally, but we owe those who who uh, you know did that, created barbecue, or created bacon by smoking delicious pork belly, which is normally just a it's a throwaway. It's something you you throw away. Blueberry bacon. Dear Lord. Are you satisfied with your grocery store? Probably not, according to a new survey. American Customer Satisfaction Index, ACSI, recently released their annual report for retailers broken out into six categories. Overall, the results weren't pretty. Satisfaction down across the board for the second straight year. 21 supermarkets looked at. Uh, Here's what they said. Let's do the, uh, the top five supermarkets, shall we? Top five supermarkets. Five, Costco. Sure. Uh, Four, Publix, P-U-B-L-I-X. I I, I don't have a Publix near me. Aldi. Ka-boom. Aldi is awesome. And I have some news about Aldi coming up. Why do they they charge you 25 cents for a grocery cart? And I already figured this out on my own. But I'm going to show you the uh, the official results. Wegmans is great. Wegmans is great. Uh, Number two. Oh, Wegmans. I had a Wegmans near me. Uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, glorious. And not terribly expensive. Not You just got to know what to shop for. Deli Incredible. Oh, my Lord. Trader Joe's number one. Tra- you know, I mean, there's some, uh, kind of a uh, euphoria, euphoria surrounding uh, Trader Joe's. Tr- Trader Joe's is kind of campy, cool. Um, I like I like me some Trader Joe's. I love my little free sample of coffee, my little free sample of whatever in the back of the store. I, I kind of like Aldi better, actually. But, you know, they're, they're, they're both good. They're both good. Um, bottom five supermarkets. And I disagree with uh, the last one. I really do. Because I think there's a lot of dogpiling on this store. Uh, number 18 is Save-A-Lot. Uh, I've only been to uh, Save-A-Lot once, and it was terrible. Uh, Southeaster grocers, don't know. Super value, I've been. Terrible. Albertsons companies jumped the shark a long time ago. And um, the last one is Walmart, and I disagree. Because I went to Walmart this morning. Went to Walmart this morning, and I got some stuff I'm going to share. Uh, the the carb craze. I've been talking about the uh, the anti carb craze. I got a couple of things. If you're watching me on YouTube right over here, I got something that, uh, at Sprouts. Grain free tortilla chips. I'm going to try those in a second. And the Crepini naked crepes. These are these are being their crepes essentially being used as. Um. Tortilla wraps. I got these at Sprouts this morning, and um, I <clears throat> this is a way to get rid of because you know it's all anti-carb. Carbs are terrible. Carbs, even though uh, you know Jesus walked the desert and ate fish and uh, drank wine and and ate bread, uh, you know, and, and never. I don't think he was ever fat. I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So I'm gonna taste these in just a second here. Tell you what I think. Don't worry, I won't uh, make any food noises because it's nothing more annoying 
than watching somebody uh, eat something or hearing somebody eat something. I want to talk about a sponsor, Dots Pretzels. Dots Pretzels is uh, just, oh, my Lord in heaven. The Okay, who gets excited about pretzels? I, I, you know, most people don't. They're just pretzels. Dots Pretzels uh, created by a woman named Dot, and uh, it was in North Dakota. And since then, since the creation of the uh, the Dots Pretzels, and it was an old family recipe, uh, they have spread to uh, 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 a place in Lenexa, Kansas, near Kansas City, where they're making them, and they're also in Arizona making these pretzels. Why? Because they're the best pretzels you've ever had in your life. They're unbelievable. They taste like a little garlic, a little uh, a little onion, a little heat, some salt. Yeah, and you don't want to dip them in anything. You don't want mustard. You don't want don't don't adulterate the pretzels. It's like it's like putting blueberries on bacon. Dots Pretzels. It's D O T S. Dots Pretzels. You can order them online. D O T S Pretzels dot com. All right. You can also uh, go up and down the I twenty nine, maybe I thirty five corridor in the Midwest and find them different. Stores like Ken House in Kansas City or uh, Ace True Value Hardware, oddly enough, right at the uh, right at the cash register. Ace True Value, at least here in Kansas City, they've kind of they've embarked on the on the gourmet foods thing, the pickled items, the mustards, and all this, the the barbecue sauces. At least where I am, and I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. So Dots Pretzels, D O T S Pretzels, P R E T Z E L S dot com. Order them, and if you uh, get a chance to uh, write a note, just say, hey, hey man, I heard Rob Carson talking about it. On Sound Bites. That's my show. Game of, Thon- uh, Game of Thrones. I never got into Game of Thrones. I just, you know, not not into the whole Game of Thrones thing. I don't have time for it. I mean, Peter Dinklage is great and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, you know, it's like watching Dungeons and Dragons. I have no interest. Brewery Oma Gang has dropped their Game of Thrones beer because no one else would have survived the emotional turmoil of Call Drago's death. I'm reading this because I've never watched the show. They've created a uh, Hands of the Queen Ale and Mother of Dragons Porter. Oh, God, this is so nerdy. Somebody made nerd cool again for some... How, 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 when did this happen? The delicate yet complex blend was largely influenced by the HBO hits final season. According to a representative for the brand, the brew is a tribute to those who aspire to be the final occupant of the Iron Throne. Man, they're nerdy. It's also Omegang's first attempt at co-fermentation, the 5.9.5% uh, uh, ABV golden ale was created with Pinot Grigio and Voignier grape juices and then was bottle conditioned with champagne yeast. Is this beer, is, is this even beer anymore? I mean, listen, I love me some craft brew. I love me some... But, and then conditioned with champagne yeast. Wow. Uh, artsy fartsy. I think I saw this. I've got a little uh, dumpy little liquor store that I go to. I don't drink liquor, but um, uh, I mean, I do drink vino and occasional beer. Uh, I saw the Game of Thrones beer. I might have to try it. I might have to try it sometime. You know, with champagne yeast. <laughs> God, really? Wow. Kalua. They have a new espresso martini in a can. This looks good, okay? Because it's a chocolate, like a chocolate martini that has the the bubbles, uh, the tiny, tiny, tiny bubbles and the foam associated with like a, a, like a Guinness, okay? Canned espresso style martini uh, combines Kahlua, God bless it, coffee, and vodka. Has a creamy foam top, uh, foam on top, meant to mimic the foam that comes with a uh, just-made espresso martini or a Guinness. The cans themselves have a smart nitrogen widget, which is like, what did I just say? Um, uh, and also Boddington's. Boddington's has it as well. Boddington's and Guinness have this little uh, nitrogen thing in there, and you get these little tiny bubbles that come to the surface, and it's it creates kind of this delicious creamy foam. Oh, I, now I want a Guinness. I haven't had a Guinness in years. I haven't had a Guinness in at least five years. I need to have one. Boddington's is the blonde version, essentially, of Guinness, by the way, in case you didn't know. Kahlua recommends pours, pouring these into a glass to get the full experience, but also the canned aspect is pretty nice. Uh, if you're going to have a martini, an espresso martini, yeah, take it out of the can. 
That sounded weird. Anyway, <clears throat> dump it into a glass. <laughs> Take it out. Uh, they're going to be sold uh, nationwide in four packs, uh, 4.5% alcohol by volume, which is kind of an insult to a martini. But, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Here's an idea. There are a lot of places that, uh, you know, I, I, there are a couple of vineyards that I go to and they'll bring out food trucks rather than trying to build a kitchen, rather than try and go through the uh, the uh, regulatory rigmarole of, of uh, you know, putting a kitchen on site when you can, you know, you've gone and gone through enough just to build the, the vineyard, right? Shake Shack is, uh, has launched a, uh, a rentable food truck for your next party. All right. So birthday, wedding, graduation, new baby, whatever promotion, all you can do is just uh, rent the uh, Shake Shack truck. And I've seen this at parties. My wife worked at a company where they would uh, rent food trucks and you could get free food from the food truck, which is really nice. So, uh, this is kind of a nice idea. Um, Here's the here's the question I have about food trucks. All right, you are you are literally eating truck uh, food made out of the back of an old van. <laughs> you know, I mean, you are. And, and listen, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I'm a I'm a huge fan. Why is why can you go to a restaurant that has a location and get worse food than out of somebody? Taking an old van or an old bus or an old FedEx delivery truck, <laughs> putting a stove in it, and uh, and uh, you know bringing it up to code. Why is the food better? Now I am not a chef. I am not a chef, but here's why I think it's better. It's because you have limited options. And I believe, like me, who I would love to eventually have a food truck, this is run by people who are very good at making a few things. Remember the movie Chef? Oh, so good, so good, so good. These are, these are people who are entrepreneurs. They want to keep it simple. They're going to make the very best thing they can, and they're going to serve it out of a truck. And like I said, they, they, they prepare a few things that are very good, very good. And you don't need to have a giant menu. You don't need to have 50 things on them. And you don't have to have appetizers. You don't have to have salads. You don't have to have uh, entrees. You don't have to have uh, desserts. None of that. It's just five or six things that are, or even two or three, that are just great. Just great. My dream to have a... Uh, a food truck, and mine would be a, uh, and I know that may, and maybe this is a cliche, but it would be barbecue Italian. It would be a barbecue Italian fusion. So you'd have like uh, pulled pork lasagna and brisket ravioli with a bechamel. I've decided bechamel would be the sauce that I use for that because you don't want to do a barbecue sauce because it's just, it's too much sugar, too much sugar. Everybody, speaking of sugar, this is. I worked with a guy in uh, D.C., and uh, his name was Shamrock. Called himself Shamrock, Jeff Shamrock. And uh, we would talk about Lucky Charms. And in everybody's fantasy as a child with regard to Lucky Charms is, right? Just charms. Just a box of just charms. Screw the cereal. The, the cereal's like, you know, sweet dog food. It's not that great. But you get it for the charms. You get it for those, those freeze-dried astronaut food marshmallows <laughs> that's what it is it's like astronaut food you ever go to a museum of smithsonian or whatever and you get the astronaut ice cream and that's 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 lucky charms now those are the charms and lucky charms so just if we could just do luck just charms like like for instance one of the things they do is uh, oops all berry crunch all berries crunch have you ever, ever done that when my when my kids were smaller, my, my son was young? I'd go get, oops, all berries crunch, like the factory made a mistake. Oh, my gosh, we forgot to put the other things in. Do you know why? Because the other part of the cereal sucks. It's not that good. Captain Crunch is okay when it's by itself. But once you add berries, you don't even pay attention to the other cereal. You don't even pay attention to those little uh, golden squares. You just don't because it's, it's the sugar, right? It's the sugar. What about if they were a uh, Lucky Charms infused beer? Funny. Smart Mouth Brewing Company in Virginia cooking up a Lucky Charms inspired beer. Aptly dubbed Saturday morning 
as a nod to those cartoon-filled weekends we fondly reminisce on. The beer is a 6.6% IPA, brewed with in-house toasted marshmallows and bulk dehydrated marshmallow bits. <laughs> I love this. I love this. I see. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm a Gen Xer. So we had to wait for Saturday morning for cartoons. We, we just had to wait, man. We had to wait for Saturday morning cartoons. So it's kind of funny. Um, I, 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 I would try this. I would try this. The cereal-inspired booze will be offered on tap and in cans featuring artwork that looks like the bright red Lucky Charms box you likely uh, scan at the grocery store. For you as a kid or, or for your kids. And by the way, the slogan is magically ridiculous. I think I would want to try it. Only problem is <clears throat> Norfolk, Virginia. That's where it's going to be. It's going to be uh, some local uh, restaurants are going to be able to have it. They don't have any plans to ship Lucky Charms themed uh, 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 beer around the country. You know, I saw this as part of this piece. I think this is on uh, Eater. Eater.com. They said, what's next? Frosted Flakes Vodka. You know, I think that I think that Lucky Charms Vodka would be better than Lucky Charms Beer. Don't you? Because vodka is easy. Vodka is a palate. You could, I've had marshmallow vodka before. I've had popcorn vodka before. It's a little bit more, uh, you know, I don't know. A little bit more uh, palatable. A little more palatable. Let me switch scenes here. All right. So Lay's is re- releasing a, a Flaming Hot Dill Pickles. Okay. Lay's is releasing uh, a new uh, product called Flaming Hot Dill Pickles. Now, the Flaming Hot thing is kind of a big deal with regard to, uh, with regard to uh, <clears throat> potato chips. And I was, at, I was at the store today. I was, oddly enough, I was at Walmart. I know. I was at Walmart. And, uh, and I went over to the chip aisle, and Lay's has got everything. They did the, they did the, uh, the kind of funny um, different flavors that you could actually... Uh, submit to Lay's, and I remember it was like eight years ago, I said, Sriracha! Nobody will ever think of Sriracha! Because at the time, Sriracha was kind of new. Or maybe it's ten years ago. And of course, everybody said Sriracha. <laughs> you know. But there's like biscuits and gravy flavor, and there's uh, all sorts of crap flavor. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, uh, flame and Hot Dill Pickle. So they're taking their uh, their dill pickle, and they're adding the flame and Hot seasoning, which you see on uh, Cheetos and all this other stuff. <clears throat> so, um... They also have some other uh, things. This is part of their uh, design to mimic the distinct beats and spicy lyrics of hip-hop. They're also going to add, are you ready for this? Wavy electric lime sea salt. <sighs> Whatever. And uh, kettle-cooked classic beer cheese. Those are going to be available. They must have stoners working for them. That's it. There's only only people who would be stoned. Only people who are stoned would, uh, would think this is... Uh, this is good. Sour Patch Kids marshmallows available at Walmart. They taste like peeps. I like sour candy, actually. I'm not big into the chocolate anymore. I don't know. I kind of like the sour cho- the sour stuff. Anyway, they're available at uh, Walmart. Sour Patch Kids. They're a uh, massive, massive endeavor. I've got some right with me in the studio. Sour Patch Kids. Uh, messing with the green screen a little bit there. But Sour Patch Kids are... Uh, you know they're 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 sweet, and now they've got sour ca- sour patch marshmallows, so they sound like sour, or they taste like sour um, uh, peeps. I'm not crazy about those. All right, finally, uh, Whole Foods closing 365 of its uh, oh, closing its 365 stores. 365 markets will be converted into regular Whole Foods stores. Twelve remaining 365 markets apparently. I haven't had the chance to really shop at the uh, 365s. Um, I don't know Whole Foods. If you can, if you can afford to go to Whole Foods, God bless you. I just think they're a little overrated. Their deli's nice, though. All right, second half of the show, right ahead, ladies and gentlemen. On the way, uh, number one restaurant in the world. It's tiny, and it's cheap. Oddly enough, okay, that's on the way. Also, why veganism is an eating uh, eating disorder. The death rattle of mail order meal kits. Okay. Um, McDonald's offering a uh, special goat cheese burger and um, the downside to the keto diet for women. Women, there's something associated with the keto diet that's very 
uh, unsavory for women. I am Rob Carson. You are listening to uh, Spoonie Radio. Spoonie.com. Back in a few. <laughs> 